Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you so much, Thomas uh, Eiten, for inviting me as a keynote speaker. Um, first, I want to say that uh, I'm very much in love with uh, particularly two cities. That's Venice, where I'm working already for 30 years with uh, the Berengo Foundation and this uh, glass studio. I'm, I'm just back from St. Petersburg to, to do an exhibition in the Hermitage. And I'm so glad that I'm be here. And the second one is, of course, Beirut. Um, there is a, a history that I have there in 2012. We had this also this exhibition, Glass Dress, in the Museum of Contemporary Art. And in 2018, I was the keynote speaker for the opening of the Congress of Human Rights. I will, um, I will try in 20 minutes to bring you in an other world. <laughs> I try. So the title of this is La Vibride. It's a completely new world, word, and it, uh, it means uh, the breeding of life, actually. I started always with this, um, uh, with this slide by saying this is not a chicken. This is a piece of art. And actually, it's, um, if you look at it, it's a crossbreeding because this one is born in the Listen Gallery in London and was a crossing of a Belgian chicken with an English chicken and with a Dutch chicken. And I call it the Mechelse Red Cup. And why chickens? Well, chickens are the most purebred animals in the world. And they come from the Himalaya. And this is the jungle fall. And by mutation and manipulation, they spread their genes all over the world. And this was my first poster that I made, looking to all these chickens. And actually, what did I saw? That in every country, we start to make a chicken that sells, tells something about the country. This is, for example, Poulet de Bresse. It's red in the head, it's white in the body, and it has blue legs. It's the French flag. It's a representation of a nation. And you can go on. Every county has that kind of symbol, just in a chicken. And I was thinking, in 1999, is this fair that we actually put a frame around a living animal? And my answer as an artist was actually no. I think once in a while we have to break the frames and to step into another situation. And that's why I started this program, the Cosmopolitan Chicken Crossbreeding Program. And I started with the Belgium chicken, because I'm Belgium, to crossbreed with the French one, the Poulet de Bresse, and this on the border between Belgium and French. And actually the outcome is a mix, is a hybrid. And immediately, you know, I saw the big thing. I said, I have to continue. I was invited by Listen Gallery in London, so with the result of Belgian and France, I went to London. And there I crossbreed with a typical red cap. With that result, I went to America, and now I'm 26 generations further, and this year I will crossbreed Israel. I understand that this project has nothing to do with the chicken, of course, but everything to do with us. And what is the advantage and the disadvantages of crossbreeding? And what is our position against nature? That's why I show this picture. In one hand, the chicken gives itself to this project. On the other side, it's revolting. And I think this is important to know. So I did studies around that, and I saw that every day we have 60 million chickens around the globe, and every year we have 60 million tons of eggs, so a society without chickens and eggs doesn't exist, actually. If you think where eggs and chickens are, they are everywhere. So we used every little thing of, um, of this animal. So where is use and where is abuse? And if you translate this to the world we're living in, and you say that the egg is the world, or we poison the world, or are we fertilizing the world? So my installation started to change. I was invited, for example, in Guangzhou here, where I did um, multi-spaces, 
And on the second floor of this museum, in the biennial of Guangzhou, I made a jungle. And I let people step into this jungle, looking to the jungle fall. But already with a mask, we are 2009. And actually, it's a warning sign of what we are doing and how we are related to nature. And in the second room, there were all the eggs, the domestication, beautiful stamps. You come from 45 degrees in the jungle into a refrigerator. And then you understand what is a domesticated world. And actually, in the other room, we are looking for this, the new human incubator, the man who sits on the border of the jungle and civilization, because the chicken lives on the border between jungle and civilization. And in one hand, this guy looks to civilization, but then he looks into nature. I think we are in a time frame that we're looking for rebirthing. A conclusion was fertility comes from outside. I think that was an important statement. And I started my open university of diversity. And what does it mean? Because I start to understand that this project is bigger than myself. So I started to invite scientists, biologists, social entrepreneurs to think about the advantage and the disadvantage of crossbreeding. And we start to bleed these chickens. Because now I have 26 generations almost crossing. And what did we see? By study and by making workshop with scientists, that inside of the chicken now, the genetics increased enormously. 13 million DNA. On the DNA that exists were all copies. A normal chicken, what you buy in the supermarket, is only 5 million DNA. This book of genome that, show, that shows more immunity, more fertility, and more diversity. And this is my point. It's about diversity. Knowing this from scientists, I had to look inside of this chicken and I had to rethink my projects. And I had a conclusion and I said, diversity is a given thing. It's a pity that we have to speak about diversity. So it's not enough. To build a society, you need more. And so I invented this one. The cosmopolitan chicken, the CCP, I started to crossbreed with a local chicken, a productive chicken. And actually, I call it the planetary community chicken. And this was a breakthrough. So, for example, this, the, the city of Detroit invited me with this program to come there. You know, Detroit, destroyed by the monoculture, by the car industry, only focused on one thing. So the owner, which was Mr. Wesserman from this foundation, he said, you have to come because your project is telling something about crossbreeding and combining and bringing things together so that new things can be born. So I did. I brought this book of genomes, which is for me a holy grail to the city of Detroit, and I started to work there in the communities. But first, I went to the university and to build up also the exhibitions. And in the exhibition, you see actually, beside of all the sculptures, you see all the actual, actual crossings. And then I went to Africa, invited in Zimbabwe, to show in the National Gallery in Zimbabwe diversity. Can you imagine? Bringing the chicken, the planetary chicken, into the museum and combine it together with uh, Shido Govera, a social entrepreneur who's breeding mushrooms and who's learning little orphans how to structure their life to breeding mushrooms. And I said, we have to combine this chicken. So we brought it inside of the museum. But not only this, we brought also the orphans in the museum. We brought the women in the museum from the communities they never saw this in a museum. And I think you have to break also the walls of the museum to do something like this. And then comes all of a sudden that big thing. I believe the global only exists by the generosity of the local. And I think it's really true. On a certain moment, the Ilri Foundation, which is the most important foundation 
uh, who's looking for food in developing countries called me, supported by the Gates Foundation, and they said, we need you so badly because you find, found a way to make global and local together, to crossbreed actually diversity and productivity so that the people on the spot are involved and I think this is true. So we started to build this facility, which is a piece of art, but at the same time, the crossbreeding is inside, there is a lab inside, and the chicken is inside. And that reached out actually to all the communities. And now, at this moment, it is the biggest project against poverty in the world. If you step in this facility, you see the people of the different countries reading their DNA in the book of the genomes of the chickens. So I'm part of the new group thinking about global health of the World Health Organization in Geneva. And that's why I built this facility in the middle of a city in Belgium. La Biomista. Again, a new word. La, French, bio, international, mista, Italian. The mix of life. I found this word while I was eating in sal insalata mista in Carrara. <laughs> so, this is the facility actually. And this is the ground. It's 24 hectares of ground. In the front, there is the city. And in the back is the only national park that we have in Belgium. On the other side, there are the communities. And on the other side is the industry and the agriculture. And this is the big piece of art. It's a piece of art that tells something about the position between a city and a jungle. And actually, I started to talk with Mario Botta, which you know is an architect, a good one. And he said immediately, if you are making this, I help you. And actually, this is the facility. La Biomista, this is the entrance that we call the Ark. There is a villa where I put all my foundations inside, the genetic research foundations uh, to help children in developing countries, and the battery. Inside of this villa, it started immediately with three pieces that gives you entrance to the three different rooms. Because it was a former mine site, and it was a former zoo. And now it is La Biomista. So it raised out of the ashes because two others died. And now, with those ingredients, I created something else. They're the library of knowledge. But I'm saying all the foundations and all the projects that we're doing around the globe. And on the other side, the table as a transparent incubator where people from different professions are sitting together and thinking about what can we do in the world to help? And what can we do through all these art projects to make something happen? The battery, as I said, designed by Mayer Botta, it's about the conflict between nature and culture. You have the greenhouse, where all the lovely birds in, in, are in, but they are in danger, like hornbills, like toucans, or on top of it, you have the cage on the other side with the eagles, also a dangerous species. But when you open these two facility, the eagle will immediately take the lovely bird. And we, my studio, is in the middle of it. My studio is actually dealing with a conflict. And when visitors are coming, they can feel that. They can see that through the different installations. And they can feel that nature and culture actually is a conflict which we have to resolve. resolve. We have to be aware that we are part of nature. So inside of my studio, I bring different groups together to make discussions around it, like here. Or when you get out of the studio, there is the cultural park. And in the cultural park, you will see the different sculptures like here, uncomfortable. The baby that cannot see the world or is not allowed to see the world. It cannot see nature, just in the middle of nature. The different 
animals where I'm working with, because I'm not only working with chickens, I also work with camels, llamas, alpacas, and you can see all these different installations. They were on different parts in the biennial. And when you leave the domestic part, you come in protected paradise. And in protected paradise, I put three boxes. Three boxes as incubators for students so that they can work on unthinkable things. And at this moment in my studios, I have hundreds of these students all around the globe and they're working on unthinkable projects. But what is unthinkable? I think to breed two chickens was unthinkable. But 20 years later, it is something. And not only this, also the llama with the double immune system. Something what I discovered as an artist is now the llama who goes against COVID and can make medication. So Lab Ovo is important. It's in the middle of this place where we make discussions and where we invited communities. And there is this llama. Lama Winter. If you go on internet, you see Lama Winter everywhere. This is the Lama will give us tomorrow medication and not a vaccine against COVID. La Vibride. La Biomista is in the middle of this place. Zwartberg is the name. The yellow part is La Biomista. And now I'm taking you to the, to the light green part. And the light green part was actually the mine site. But everything has disappeared. Only the train is still there. So I was drawing a new plan, La Vibride, the breeding of life around La Biomista. And then in the front of La Biomista, you have all the villas. Like it's more like a jet set, you know? And there are all buildings. But we can renew them. We can make them different. And people start to think about it and start to make hotels because we have more than 100,000 visitors at this moment in a small town as Genk, in the middle of nowhere, and only two years open. That's a lot of people. So they're asking for staying. And the other part, there is the community part. And on that community part, we have the Bodewijnlaan. There, we start to make it green and to call it Rue de Menu. So it becomes something where you can grab fruit, where you can have water, where people can just walk. This is another living around La Biomista, and we expand the art. And there is nomad land created by the people around La Biomista. Because I did two things I think which were important. One thing is no restaurant facility in La Biomista. Because everything has to happen around this park. This is not Club Med. This is something else. And people started to create and we help them. Because everybody who comes in La Biomista pays a ticket. And I made, it, I made it clear to the mayor. I said, all the money that comes there is not for me, but goes to the community. And then you can build something. So we started to build Nomadland. We are building the Baudouin Land. And it's bringing people together. And I heard it here today a couple of times. Little things, you know, where little ideas can grow to big ideas. I think this is important. And at the end of La Biomista, I am looking actually to the place that goes to the national park. And also, there is a little airport there. And I want to make the statue of nature, built with natural materials, bamboo, elephant grass, and recycling of the windmills. And the eggs, and the eggs of course. The idea is, of course, the nest of the storks, which are already in La Biomista. After two years, we have more than 20 storks breeding there. The weavers, which make these little nests. The bamboo, of course, and then this kind of result. People can sleep there. 
There can be conferences, a green school. That is the idea. And the connection with the green airport. The only thing for this, we have to find, of course, investment. But everything is coming. I mean, if I look at Cristo, you know, which I knew very well, he started to draw the Arc de Triomphe, I think, 30 years ago. Today is a fact. If you don't do it, it will never exist. The future is now. And this is why we are here, Thai thinking. To think about this future. If you don't do it, it will be never there. So everything is already designed, and hopefully one day we will create this beautiful thing. Because that's another step in La Biomista and La Vibride. Because there you can really do foresting, for, for example. Vegetarian restaurant with only things from the wild. Community food on the other side and gastronomical thinking on the, on the, on the, on the front. So you leave actually nature and you go back into the city. And actually what we need is this energy, communication, and life. Energy we give further by electricity, communication by firewire, but the umbilical cord, this is so important. That's the last part. Because every organism is looking for an other organism to survive. This is uh, what I like to say. Thank you. Well, the art piece which is outside is, um, is the walking egg. And the walking egg is actually one of my first art pieces. And um, for me, that was the start, uh, how I start to work in the, um, in the glass ovens of the Berengo Foundation. And for me, what was important, if you look at this art piece, you see the egg is in glass, which is fragile. Life is fragile and strong at the same time. And the eggs are iron. And I think we all need strong legs to go forwards and to protect the fragility of life. And this is actually the symbol of that. So it's standing here in this hotel. Thank you. Thank you.